I had to sing this afternoon uh, was 31, A New Name and Glory. The reason there are not so many of them are singing because it's not applicable to them. Yeah. It goes against what they believe. Amen. You can't be, you can't sing a new name in glory if you believe you can lose your salvation. Oh my, yeah. Uh, my, Miss Shirley and I were talking about that before church. And uh, because you'd have to change the words, wouldn't you? Mm. Uh, for there's a new name written down in glory and it might be mine. <laughs> <laughs> it may be mine. Uh, you'd have to go and rewrite the whole thing and so they just stopped singing them. But uh, I was thinking of that. So yeah, that's why they don't sing them. Uh, it's just, uh, it has to change too many things. All right. <clears throat> so it's good to be here this evening. And thank you for prayers for um, our family and, and settling. And uh, uh, we are doing that. Our shipment's coming in tomorrow. Appreciate your prayers on that. And uh, it is very different for us uh, being in the States again. And people ask us questions like, what's the number one thing that's different? I said, it's not just one thing, it's several things. Uh, everywhere you look, it's different. You wouldn't see that check or it wouldn't be like this. And, and so it's overloaded. Just hearing English everywhere, we're not used to that. And uh, so, uh, but uh, praying for God settling us, and he has, and uh, many miracles are all the way. And so we appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> This evening, I would like to look at the subject, if I may, on the presence of God. Um, how we react to the presence of God, being in His presence. Uh, this morning, uh, I, was, I just wrote down, because it's I, easy for me to forget things, but uh, a pastor made a statement of being along with God. Along with God and also the secret place. And uh, that's all dealing about being in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, that's what I want to look to, uh, for us to look at this evening. And uh, we ended uh, this morning's service with near to the heart of God. To be in the presence of Almighty God. And uh, that's should be our heart's desire to, to, to live in that. Amen? I was talking with somebody last week, and they were saying, you know, it just feels like, uh, I'm in one room and God's in the other room. Okay. It's not supposed to be like that. And uh, we should desire to have that uh, strong presence of God in our life. Uh, today we're going to look, this evening, look at three different lives and how they responded to the presence of God. And, uh, and they all responded differently and uh, so do we. Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Lord, I pray that you bless this evening. And I uh, thank you for your people. And I thank you for uh, the great Son you've given us. And I uh, pray you bless as we look at, into the presence of God and, and in relation to our lives. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for us. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we need the presence in our life. The presence of God. Amen. We need to seek for it, desire it, go down to, and, and uh, say, I'm not going to leave this spot in my life. I'm not going to leave it with, without it. Uh, and when I think of that, I remember the story of Joshua. Uh, you look over with me in Exodus, and uh, I'll just we'll read this as our text verse, and uh, I can only have one text, main text verse, but uh, Exodus chapter 33, if you would stand please, and we'll read this one verse. Uh, this is after the children of Israel uh, worshipped the golden calf, and uh, the Lord responded, of course, and and uh, many things went on, and uh, Moses was told to take the tabernacle, and he took it out of the camp, and, um, and and so they waited for the cloud, pillar of cloud to appear over it, showing the presence of God, and uh, I just want to uh, read here, uh, later on we'll come back to this at the end of the message, but I want to see the response of Joshua, you know, we don't hear much of Joshua uh, before he became leader, but he does pop up here and there in the in uh, the books of Moses before he became uh, the next leader of Israel. But Exodus chapter 33 uh, and verse, let's look at verse 10. It said the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshiped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses 
face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again unto the camp. So he's there, he spoke with the Lord. And uh, when that was done, Moses turned around and went back into the camp. Because remember, the tabernacle was outside the camp. And so he turned again into the camp and said, But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Uh, you may be seated. Uh, he, he didn't want to leave. He, he saw the presence of God. He felt the presence of God. And he just wanted to stick around a little longer. Amen. I'm just going to camp out here for a while. We've all experienced that. Amen. And uh, we see Josh, we see with uh, David, when he had sinned against God, he pleaded with God. He said, please. He said, cast me not away from thy presence. He wanted to stay. He knew what it was to be in the presence of God. He had learned the joy of dwelling in his presence. It says in Psalm 16, 11, the psalmist says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. We see also with the presence of God, what it brings. Look with me in, in Acts, if you would, Acts chapter 3. <clears throat> Acts chapter 3, in verse 19. It mentions the word refreshing, to be refreshed. It's the only place in the New Testament that this is mentioned. But it says in, in Acts 3 verse 19. It says repent ye therefore and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come. From the presence of the Lord. Amen. That's why we go to church. Amen. That's why we open our Bibles. That's why we kneel on our knees. Because we need a refreshing. Amen. We get in the world and. Maybe it's the, tainted by the world and these things and the cares of this world. And we get along with God. We get up off our knees and we've been refreshed. Amen. Refreshment comes from being in His presence. The word presence of God, it, it, what it means is being near before the face of God. A, a nearness. Being in the immediate proximity of God. Being close. One put it this way. It says His presence is revealed by the demonstration of His power. And conviction of sin, which is through the man of God, through the word of God, and through the prayer to God. Amen. So I mentioned we would look at the lives of three different people and examine their response to God's presence. And uh, it's, an, it's an interesting study that I want us to look at. First one I would like for us, if you would, turn to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. <clears throat> Not, kind of, not in that order that they appear in the scriptures, but uh, the first one, we we'll spend a little bit more time than the other two, but the first one is, it, it says in Genesis chapter 4, uh, it starts off with uh, Eve giving birth to Abel and Cain, and Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain kills his brother, and then uh, we see it brings up him speaking to, to God, and it brings up that famous... A quote we use it a lot of times we out of context, but uh, he said in verse nine uh, when the Lord said, "Where is thy brother?" He said, "Am I my brother's keeper?" And uh, so it goes on dialogue talking to uh, to God. Verse eleven: And now art thou cursed from the earth, uh, which opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And in verse twelve it says, "When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength." A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. <clears throat> and Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out of his out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him. Sevenfold, And the Lord said, Mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Verse 16, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. He knew where God was. He was talking with God, but chose to walk away. Nowhere do we see him pleading to stay with God. He saw God talk to God, but then he walked away from God. That's what we see. 
Cain is the worst of the three examples we look at tonight. And um, I don't know how someone can hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and walk away from it. Really, amen? amen? And you talk to them and you see what Christ has to offer. And, and even the ones you talk to will admit how their life is in a mess. And, and things, their world's turned upside down. But it's like they would choose anything but what you're talking about. We won't be take, we won't be, won't, don't want Jesus Christ. Or like the, the story of the rich man. Uh, you remember that came to Christ and said, what do, what do I like yet? I've done all these from my youth up. And what does hinder me basically from following you? Remember there in Matthew 19. And Jesus said, sell all that thou hast. And the Bible says he walked away sorrowful. <clears throat> he could have had everything, but he walked away empty-handed. He didn't think he did, but he walked away empty-handed. He walked away from the Lord because he had wealth. He had wealth. <clears throat> Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. That seems so sad. Just to walk away. It is a sad case when an individual walks away from the presence of the Lord. Not only the lost walk away, but God's people walk away. The lost walk away from God's conviction, away from God's love, away from God's grace, God's mercy. Walk away from it all. I've seen people, and you've seen it as well, people you tried to help. You try to do all you can and they just walk away. Amen. Makes no sense at all, does it? Right. Devil is a master of confusion. But God's people can and do also walk away. Uh, look with me if you would in, in uh, 2 Timothy. Second, over in 2 Timothy in chapter 4. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 4. We see this story here. We very familiar with it. 2 Timothy 4 and then uh, verse 9 and 10, Paul speaking here to Timothy. He said, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me. Why, Demas? Having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Croesus to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia, says, They all left me. Demas hath forsaken me. He walked, not only walked away from Paul, but more importantly, he had walked away from God. Because he fell in love. with the world. So not only the lost walk away from all the great things that God has to offer, but God's people also. Uh, Saul, we read the story in 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, where God told him to go and utterly destroy the Amalekites, all of them, everything, including Adam, everything. And he went and he saved the king, and he saved some of the sacrificial animals. He did all these things. He was completely in the wrong, but he told the prophet Samuel, I've obeyed God. Uh -huh. But he walked away from the presence of God from that moment when he walked away from the commandments of God. Uh -huh. We know God sent an evil spirit, uh -huh. and uh, he tried to kill David. He tried to kill, uh, he tried to kill his own son. Because he, he, he walked away from the presence of God. His life, he was miserable. You see that all through about the, uh, when it, the Bible speaks of Saul after that point. The devil will give you anything, will give us anything, amen, if we just walk away. Just walk away. The devil can buy some people very cheap. Very cheap. Throw some money, a career, knowledge, hurt feelings, jobs, if they'll just walk away. Do we have a price? The devil's constantly like, trying to pay it. We say, I'm not for sale. Amen? Amen. Not for sale. Amen. I heard the story, I might have told you already, of the, of the young bride that uh, she had a price. It is a horrible story where she went to the church uh, to be married and she waited and waited and waited for her, her, uh, her husband to be, uh, to, to arrive at the church and he never did. 
Long story short, found out he died in an accident on the way there. And she got so, uh, so angry at God that why would God allow something like that to happen? And, uh, and it caused her to walk away from the church and walk away from everything but dealing with God. And, uh, and so uh, that was her price and uh, caused her to walk away. Demas uh, had a price. Uh, Saul had a price. And uh, it's, it, we have to be careful. As I remember an, old, an evangelist said, uh, I'm not for sale. We need to remind the devil of that. Amen. That we're not for sale. Our presence with an almighty God is maintained from the heart. That's where it's maintained. Is from the heart. Look with me if you would in Isaiah uh, chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. We want to make sure we don't walk away. God, he dealt, every time he dealt with uh, people, he was constantly talking about the heart. Because that's where either we're made or we're broken based on that. Isaiah 29, we're very familiar with this. In uh, verse 13, it simply says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near with me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Uh, they no longer, uh, they did with their mouth, but with their actions was another story. And uh, they walked out and away from the presence of God. Look what God tells us to do in regards to our heart. Look at Psalm uh, 15. Uh, very, very uh, uh, well-known psalm and talking about the house of, of the Lord and uh, who uh, is accepted and who isn't, uh, but talking about this very issue of the heart and being in His presence. Uh, psalm 15 says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle in His presence? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? What's the holy hill? Mount Zion. I've been up there. I remember arriving there in Mount Zion and saying, this ain't on the sides of the north. I know what Psalm 48 says. This is on the sides of the south. What's wrong with this picture? They said, well, that's not where Jerusalem is today. It's where it was. And uh, it was down the hill. But anyways, he says, and who shall dwell in the holy hill? It says, he that walketh uprightly, worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. A heart issue. Uh, those are the ones that shall dwell uh, in his holy hill. John 4, 24 says, we sh those that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth, according, that's of course from the heart. So no, no doubt our drawing near to God uh, and to stay close to God is through, through the heart. That's why God tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Because that's where Walking with God and staying in His presence abides is in a hard issue. So the first is Cain. He he simply the Bible says in Genesis chapter four he walked away. He heard had a dialogue with God and just walked away and stayed away. Second individual couple that I want to uh, look at is dealing with the presence of God. Of course, you can't deal with this without dealing with Adam and Eve. Look at Genesis chapter three. <clears throat> Chapter 23, or sorry, Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> of course, Sam, this, is, this text has been read, read by several this last month or and a half or so. It's come up many times. and uh, But we see here them dealing with the presence of God. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6 through 9. And when the woman saw that the tree was good and was for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her a husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? 
They were in God's presence. God would show up every day and they would walk with him in the cool of the day in the garden. And uh, talk about sweet fellowship, amen. And, uh, and this was uh, no doubt a daily routine of them being together and fellowshipping in the presence of God. Of course, any child of God knows what that's like, amen. Uh, I would, we would love to have been there in their shoes. But they hid from God's presence. Secondly, uh, some, people, uh, some people hide from God's presence. And that's what we see here. Why were Adam and Eve hiding from God? They had done something wrong. It changed everything. They had sinned against God. Some Christians hide from God. They think that they actually can hide. I saw this meme, this picture the other day of a man, and it showed this man standing behind a fence post, a wooden fence post, showed him standing there, hiding behind this fence post. Of course, his belly stuck out and his back over here. And uh, he said, it's kind of like children of God when they try to hide their sins from God. It just doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work. Adam and Eve, at first, they tried to cover their sins. We know the story. Uh, they sold fig leaves together and tried to hide their nakedness, and they realized very quickly that that uh, wasn't doing it. And so they tried to hide themselves amongst the trees of the garden. Did they actually, did they think that they could actually hide in the, in the forest away from God? Uh, and it was beginning to go down sin. Sin takes you, and it's very deceptive. And, uh, and so they uh, were fearful. It's fearful to stand before God. But it's even more fearful to stand before God when you, you know that you're in the wrong. Amen? As it was for them. And, uh, uh, but you know what? God still found them. Can't hide from God. People try. But you can't hide from the presence of God. Look with me if you would in Psalms 139. <clears throat> Talking about the presence of God. Very familiar passage. Psalm 139. In verse 7, uh, it starts there. It says, Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I send up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Adam and Eve wanted to be with God until they had sinned. And then they try to hide. It reminds me of uh, even here when... Uh, when I was living here with my, my parents and they were going to uh, BBC and uh, just a little kid came here at four shortly after that turned five and, and uh, it was always a joy because uh, dad was busy going to BBC and, and going everywhere and he was always doing something at his own business and cleaning business and there was always joy could not wait to the time that dad would come home and uh, would be asked of mom, when is he going to get here? When is he going to be here? Could not wait till dad got home. Unless I had done something wrong. I just, the time just seemed to fly. And, uh, or when you, you start acting up and acting up, and we've all been there and done that, and it says, when you get, when dad gets home, you're going to get it. <laughs> Boy, that instill fear. You didn't think of anything else but that. And, then, and, and, and my mom knew that would work. Amen. And it did. And it uh, kind of works for God's people, uh, God's children the same. Adam and Eve started out hiding, but then they, they ended up getting things right. Amen. And uh, God sacrificed an animal and they uh, offered, uh, he offered them his, his covering and they accepted it. Things were, were made right. Um, when we do something wrong, God don't expect us to hide. And uh, he expects us to get it right, amen, and keep on walking uh, in his presence. Thirdly, we, we have the third example we see of dealing with presence. So we had Cain who 
was there with God and walked away. And then we have the second one, or Adam and Eve, where they hid from the presence of God. The next one, if you would uh, turn to uh, the book of Jonah. Uh, the book of Jonah is also uh, mentioned here. And uh, in our study of Jonah, of course, we're very uh, familiar with this as well. And what a story. Uh, <clears throat> I had my bookmark in here, and uh, there it is. Jonah always changes. I don't know about your Bible, but it always changes in mine uh, and its placement. And uh, I was looking in the New Testament. It doesn't work. But Jonah chapter 1, we see here, verses 1 to 3, 1 to 3, it says, Now when the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come before me, up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And went down to Joppa, and he found his ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, but he ended up paying more dearly than that. And he went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish, again it says, from the presence of the Lord. Now we know he got on the ship, and the storm came up. And the men on the ship were asking him, why is this happening? And uh, verse 9, he said unto them, I am, the he I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, and God, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. It says in verse 10, Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. He was a child of God. He knew God. It was a prophet of God, but he fled from the presence of God. He fled because he disagreed with God. He disagreed. Nineveh and was Israel, the Israelites' arch enemy. They had been a thorn in their side, and, and this, Jonah thought he knew better than God. He, he, he didn't believe that they deserving, was deserving of God's grace. And that God should do anything for them. And so he disagreed. He took off and, uh, and away from the presence of the Lord. Uh, and he didn't want God to spare the city. And uh, he was angry. Some people are like Jonah. When God does something there in their life that they, don't dis that they don't agree with, they get mad at God. They walk away from God. Get angry at God. And uh, when we read in the book of Jonah... We don't ever see, except for in the belly of the fish, Jonah getting right. We do see the account there in chapter 2 where he got right before God and, and he confessed his sin before God. But then it didn't last very long because God uh, saved the inhabitants of the, the Ninevites. And once again, he didn't agree with it. He got mad. And, uh, and that's kind of how the book ends. Uh, with him being upset. For what we read of it, he never did get right. We lose out when we do, when we when we do this. Get angry with God. We lose the peace of God. We lose the contentment of God. We can ask this question tonight. How can we be sure to stay in his presence? We need to keep our hearts right. Amen. It's got to stay right, maintain uh, right with God. Adam and Eve got things right. And uh, it's like the song uh, we just sang, Is Thy Heart Right with God? Uh, because it's dealing with the presence of God. We need His presence in our life. Uh, and and a, a daily uh, in our life. Uh, we need to keep our head in the book and our knees on the floor. Uh, according to Hebrews chapter 4, look at me there in Hebrews 4 and verse 16. Hebrews 4 and verse 16, we see, it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We've been talking a lot about prayer lately. And uh, that helps us stay uh, in the presence of, 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 of the Almighty. It's such a, we get it from every direction. Today, don't we? 
the media, the TV, everything in this realm, we have avenues into our home, into our lives like never before. Like never before. And uh, uh, would it be, I had just a, lady, a, a man at the barbershop the other day, he, he quoted it to me he's also, he said, where to be? Uh, in the world, but not up. I mean, we're in the world, but not of the world. Amen. And uh, and uh, and so uh, these things keeps us uh, in the very presence of God. Uh, there's a price to be paid when we walk away from God's presence. Uh, you ask Jonah. Uh, they believe he he bore the the scars and, and on his body of walking away. Uh, they said he looked like an albino after he got out of the spit out of the fish and uh, all the being in that stomach for all that time. Uh, Adam and Eve, I'm sure every time they looked over at the dinner table and saw that Abel wasn't there, it reminded them of the time they walked away from God. There's scars that leave behind. So we need to, we, we saw these, these incorrect responses to the presence of God and it's in our heart, no doubt, uh, that uh, we we stay in the, His presence. We need to stay like Moses did. Remember at the very beginning, we looked in uh, Exodus uh, chapter 33. Uh, when we, we talked about Jonathan there in, in Exodus 33 and verse 11. Uh, if we turn back there again, uh, we need to say like Moses did here. He was in the tabernacle. He spoke with God. It says in, in, in Exodus 33 verse 11, it said, The Lord spoke unto uh, Moses face to face. You can't get any closer than that. Face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Didn't want to leave. But read on in verse 12. And this looking at <coughs> needing to stay. Or Correct response. We see in verse 12, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, as Moses speaking, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. That I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation <clears throat> is thy people. And he said, and this is God speaking, and he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Those two together. And it says in verse 15, and, and he said, Moses said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. I don't want to even leave where I'm at. I don't want to go a step further. I don't want to go anywhere without you. Amen. We, every day we get up, and, and uh, Brother Sowers was talking about starting his day in prayer uh, this morning and, and ending with prayer. And in our morning, as we're saying in that, Lord, I, I, I can't make it today without you. I don't want to make another step. I don't want to make another decision because I've made those before and, and I don't want to go there. I need your presence today. <clears throat> if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Don't want to go anywhere. Or we say like David in, first, in Psalm 51, 11, where he says, cast me not away from thy presence. It's kind of like Peter, James, and John. Remember when they went up to Mount Transfiguration? Remember that? They went up and Jesus appeared. And uh, and who was it? Elijah. Remember they had that? And who was the third one? Moses. And Peter, as he always did, he talked. He kind of always seemed to kind of talk out of turn. He didn't say he didn't know what to say. He said, let's make three tabernacles. We just, we want to stay here. And this presence is such, such, so great. Cast me not away from thy presence. With this presence comes joy and peace. And as Acts 3.19 says, a refreshing. 
We needed a refreshing every day. I like fresh food, amen? My, my family knows how much I love uh, leftovers. <laughs> if you want to see why I'm so down on Saturday, it's because my wife has forced me to eat leftovers from the week. No, I'm just kidding. I want fresh food. You've got to eat leftovers every now and again. I can't waste, waste not, won't, not, right? But uh, we need a refreshment, amen? And uh, from God and, and uh, staying in the present Joshua. And I just, I, I read, read this earlier. And uh, this account in Exodus 33 with Joshua. And it said that he departed not out of the tabernacle. Tears came to my eyes. I said, Lord, that's what I want to be. I want to stay. I, I don't want to leave. I want to be very close. I don't want to be like the person I just talked to this last week that says, you know what, I feel like I'm in this room and God is in the other room. I said, God don't want it that way. They don't have to be that way. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, I thank you. It's amazing and, and, and thinking about how holy a God you are and how simple man is that we could come into your presence at all. We need the Old Testament that when they came into your presence, they had to bring blood with them into the tabernacle. For the covering of sin, they had to sprinkle the blood. And, and Lord, it is by the blood we are made whole. Wow. And it, it is the reason we can come into your presence and you desire our presence. And may we never lose that desire. The Bible says, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. Mm -hmm. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's all stand and, of course, turn to page number 116. 116. Thank you. <laughs> Presence of the Lord. That was good study, I'll tell you. Enjoy that. Mm -hmm. 